So far in this series, we talked uh, about uh, TypeScript features that are equivalent to uh, functions or uh, if uh, statements or arrays. Uh, well, what's the next obvious step, right? Uh, I believe it's loops. And spoiler alert, you can have loops for your TypeScript types. And this too long to read episode of TypeScript is all about loops. I will be showing you how you can create mapped types, which is basically loops for your types. And uh, we will try to build the read-only utility type from scratch. So at the end of this episode, you will know how to add loops on your utility types. 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 How cool is that? Types. How cool is types. that? Types. How cool is that? How cool is that? How cool is that? Please, please, let's go to the intro. Hello friends, it's Nikos here and welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you are new here, this is a series about TypeScript. Every week we are exploring a different feature of the TypeScript language with practical examples and real life scenarios. So uh, if all these concepts sound uh, Greek to you, then uh, feel free to watch this uh, series from the very beginning because uh, my goal is to help you uh, become a professional TypeScript developer. Today, uh, we will focus on mapped types, and this concept is basically advanced, and um, it somehow uh, combines with everything we've seen in the previous episode. So, uh, bear this in mind, and um, you should uh, think of this feature as an advanced feature you may use at some point. Uh, it's good to learn, it's good to keep it uh, as a reference, uh, it's nice because it helps you uh, understand how the TypeScript language is working. But uh, yeah, it's mostly used for type definitions and specific use cases in applications. So uh, you don't need to use this uh, feature on a daily basis. Let's go directly to the example of how you can create a mapped type because you will understand it's a very, very simple one. So uh, here, for example, we have uh, a type user and uh, we are opening the object uh, brackets and we have this uh, thing here that says uh, for every key in this uh, union username or email, I want to basically have it as a string. And now check this out. If I hover over the user, uh, and by the way, this is a type that we never declared previously, right? This is a uh, completely new uh, type. So here you will see that we have a username and an email. And um, yeah, this basically, this code here generated this type for us because uh, it looped through this union username and email and uh, it created uh, a structure in which all these keys are strings. Pretty, pretty useful. So uh, we basically generated this structure out of nowhere, just because we can. Okay, not exactly. This is not the very practical, uh, the most practical example, but uh, let me give you a more sophisticated one. So what I'm trying to create here is the read-only version of the user. So the read-only user type. And uh, this will be basically similar to the user, but all these two uh, properties will be read-only. So we will not be allowed to make any changes. And uh, yeah, let's see how we can approach that. So first of all, we need to have an object structure as the example above. And then we need some form of a uh, structure that defines a string, right? So uh, here in these brackets, we will write our map. And this is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is key in, and this doesn't really change. And then we say key in uh, user, but we don't want the uh, complete user type. We want the keys inside the user. So we want to create a union uh, with the key values, the property keys of user of the user type. So to do that, you know already that we can use the key of operator and uh, yeah there you have it now we have a read-only user which looks pretty similar to the user type 
But what we can do is uh, basically make it read-only. And uh, to make it read-only, we can basically add the read-only keyword for every uh, each of uh, the properties of this uh, type. So if I hover over here, you can see the result. Every single property is now a string and it's read only. So this is basically an immutable object. So let's test if this will work. I'm pasting a random user here and uh, I specify that this user is a read only user. Now, if I try to make a change, for example, if I try to reassign the email property, uh, boom, we get an error because uh, this property is now a read only property, right? Uh, and this is uh, basically our read-only user utility type. Of course, this uh, is an immutable object uh, because uh, we only have these two literal types here. Uh, we don't have any reference types, uh, but still, it's a very nice solution. And um, yeah, I know that the syntax here is a bit strange and uh, a bit complicated to get familiar with, but uh, it actually works. It's really powerful. Now, an ultimate solution would be to create a generic read-only type and uh, uh, to use it with any kind of objects, not just users. So uh, to do that, we can simply replace this user here with a T. And um, I'm going to say that this is the read-only tool. I will tell you in a bit why I'm putting this two uh, number there. And uh, here, of course, we don't want to use the user. We just want to use the type T. And uh, we can safely replace this part with the user. Awesome. Same result as before. We are protected from uh, updating, from uh, mutating this object. And now you will be wondering why I'm using the read-only too and I'm not using the read-only. <laughs> Because uh, if I use the read-only, TypeScript will complain because this is another uh, built-in utility type. So basically, we don't even need to implement it at all. But here's the source code of how you can more or less recreate the read-only utility type by yourself. Look at you. You just built your own utility type by using some of the most complicated TypeScript features out there. I'm really proud of you and uh, I'm really happy uh, if this episode helped you learn something new. By the way, I have made uh, another video in which I present my most favorite building utility types. You should definitely check it out. And as always, in my blog post about mapped types, you can find everything I presented to you in this video, including the coding examples. It's a nice way to review what we've learned. And if you like this video, then you will definitely love the Too Long To Read TypeScript series. And I've made a playlist just for you, so that it's easier to find all of my episodes combined. And don't worry, you will find all the relevant links in the description of this video. So thank you very much for watching this episode and for supporting my channel. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and uh, if you have any suggestions and recommendations for the next episodes. And uh, don't forget to press this subscribe button because uh, we have more to learn about TypeScript in the next uh, episodes. So until the next time, have a creative day.